remain standing. Open your King James Bible, please, to the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke in the New Testament. Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8. I'm glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, Justin, your wife's probably okay by herself, isn't she? Oh, you already said you something about Give me a big, big long book. Come around here and show me that. Good. Yes, I really like this guy. Can you sit next to him and show him the Bible? There you go. Okay, everybody, everybody, you can sit beside somebody with a Bible. Everybody got it? Wonderful. Thank you. Let me sit by yourself. But it does have Bible. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to Jeremiah. Let me go to Luke. Luke chapter number 8, please. Luke chapter number 8. We'll begin reading at verse number 26. I will read out loud. You read along with me silently, but we'll read this together. Luke chapter number 8, starting in verse number 26. Now, I'm trying to break in a new Bible, so you'll be patient with me. Verse number 26. It's large print. You knew it would come to that, didn't you? Yes. All right. Chapter number 8, verse number 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, uh, fell down before him, and said, and and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it, the unclean spirit, uh, had caught him, and he was kept bound in chains and fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils have entered into him. And they besought him, and now these are the devils beseeching Jesus, would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was, and there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place unto the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went in and told in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was done. And came Jesus and found the man, came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were cast. That's right, we're departed. Sitting at, his, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they also, which saw it, told them by what means he that possessed the devils was healed. And the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart. And it's all the people of the town asking Jesus to leave. For they were taken with great fear, and he went into the ship. And return back thither. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him, now this is the man talking to Jesus, that he might be with him. And Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done for thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole, the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Our text verse be verse number 32. Verse 32. Let's read that again, please. I'll read it out loud. You read along with me. And there were and heard of, swine, uh, heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Father, thank you for the Bible. Every man has an opinion, I suppose. Every woman has an opinion. We all, by what we have been taught or learned, may have our own ideas about what is right and wrong. So I thank you now that there is a word of God that we can go to. If we really want to know the truth, we can go there. We do not have to make things up or assume. Help us, please, just to read the Bible, not to read into it, 
but read it and let it talk to us. Father, thank you for these good folks that are here this morning. Please bless over in our Spanish ministry also, and those that are out back in our beginner and junior churches out there, and in our nurseries, and then those that are watching live stream. May it be a blessing to them also. Dear God, I would rather they were here. I think they would rather they were here, but since they're not, please help them also. Thank you for the folks that are here. Bless your word, not for my sake but for theirs and for the cause of Christ. We love you and ask for your help this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. This is a very sad story. It's a very, very sad story. And you say, yeah, but it turns out pretty good. But it's a sad story. Listen very carefully. Jesus went to the country of the Gadarenes uh, across the sea. And when he went over there, the Bible said there was this man that ran to him and met him. Now, I don't know how soon this was. I don't know what happened. And I don't know how long this man was in this condition. But the Bible said he was full of devils, demons. And so this man come to Jesus. And don't you find that odd to begin with? Someone living that way run to Jesus. And then the next thing they said was, please don't torment us. Don't do that. Okay, then you should have stayed away from him. But they didn't. They ran to him. So we're reading this story here, and we come to find out that he went to Jesus, and he cried out, and wanted to know, what do we have to do? Are you here to torment us before our time? They knew who Jesus was, and they knew one day they would be tormented. I'm assuming they're talking about hell one day. And uh, so this is the conversation that's going on. All this is going through a man. Jesus is talking to a man. Demons are talking through him to Jesus Christ. By the way, Jesus, uh, uh, demons know exactly who Jesus is. They don't just talk to him any way they want to. Lots of respect and fear, even when demons, it's not like human beings, isn't that weird? And so we find out here, now watch this very carefully. In verse number 28, when, when he saw Jesus, he cried, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? Watch what they say. I beseech thee, torment me not. No, 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 no. Jesus is going to torment you. Isn't this what a lot of people think today? Boy, if I get saved and start going to church, it'd be nothing but misery. Man, I'll give up all of my fun. I won't be able to do anything. It's almost like Jesus is the tormentor. And that's not true. Jesus is not the enslaver. Jesus is the Savior. Amen. You understand? And so what I want you to notice also, look at verse number 29. For he, talking about Jesus, had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it caught him, the unclean spirit in him, and he was kept bound in chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil. See, it's the devil driving things. It's the devil driving people into sin. It's the devil keeping people away from God. It's the devil that's destroying your life. It's not God. It's not religion. It's not churches. It's not people trying to do what's right. It is the devil. No doubt about it at all. That's what's causing your problem this morning. In the garden, when there were innocents before the sin, they walked with God in the cool of the evening. Everything was perfect. Everything was going well. You know what's causing all your problems? We have made wrong choices about Jesus Christ, and therefore we're doing the same thing. And actually, how many times have I heard mothers that have lost children, people who have been divorced, people in churches where they're split, blaming God for the problem? God is not the problem. The devil is the problem. And the same thing in this man's life. But it's so easy to look at what we're at right here and then blame God. Why didn't God change the world? Well, God didn't cause this problem. We did that. We, we like to sow, but we don't like to reap. We like to cause a problem, but we don't want to solve the problem. And on this case, we cannot solve this problem. We need Jesus' help. And so here's what's happened here. And Jesus looked at him and said, it's not that Jesus didn't know. He wanted his demons to talk to him. He said, what's your name? You've watched the movies, right? Legion. Right? You've watched them all. Got it all down. You know all about this, right? His name was Legion. He said, because we're many. There's a lot of us here. Do you know some people that are lost... I know, I know this sounds as weird in our knowledgeable society as it can be. Let me turn this on in case I'm going to go crazy. In our knowledgeable society, we demon possession, devil, we don't think that way anymore. Even in Baptist church, we go, yeah, 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 okay, you know, this is for the kids, right? No, this is for you. This is a grown man. This is a grown man who is possessed by many, many demons. You understand that? And Jesus comes face to face with him, and the demons right off the bat say, we know who you are. 
We know who you are. You're sitting here this morning, and I'm preaching to you about Jesus, and you act like you don't know who he is or that you have to respect him. Now, I told you to get ready for this morning, didn't I? This is all introduction. We'll get to preaching here in just a second. Now, listen very carefully here. So what happens to this man is, he said, because there are many devils have entered, many devils has entered into him. He didn't ask for them, but they were there. Now they're speaking, they're using him, they're destroying his life. They're causing him, forcing him almost to the point of self-destruction. Let's call it uh, suicide. By the way, that's what suicide is, self-destruction. Self-destruction is a person who, why go on? I have no, and you actually think it's you, don't you? You think somebody has told you you're the problem. No, you're not the problem. There are things in this world that we, even as Baptists and Bible believers, no longer tend to believe anymore. You know why? Because psychologists and doctors and pharmaceutical companies have said, here's your problem, take one of these. And we just, oh, okay, got it. You left out God. You left out the power that can change your life, and we've got to get back to this once again. Look, just because, well, back in the days of Jesus, the Bible has not changed. The Bible has not changed. Do you know in our world right now, there are people all over the world that believe in demon possession, except many preachers and many Christians. We don't believe it anymore. We blame everything. I'll, I'll talk to you about this here in just a second here. Listen to me very carefully here. Now, down in verse number 32, this man is talking to Jesus, and Jesus is casting them out, and they said this, right? please don't cast us into the deep. Now, I'm not sure what the water has to do about all this, but they said, don't send us there. And they asked him, on the hillside, on that mountain, there is a herd of sheep. Now, we have one man filled with demons. He said, there's a herd of sheep over uh, sheep. There's a herd of, of swine over here. Let us please, please, let us go there. Don't cast us into the deep. There was a lake nearby. And they said, don't do that. And he said, okay, go ahead. Now, they leave the man because Jesus told them to. The reason they did, because the man ran to Jesus. The man fell down before Jesus and said, please, help me. Then the demons began to talk. We're still in control here. We'll tell you what to do until they realize it was Jesus. And they go, oh, okay, we, okay. We know who you are. Then they don't, don't cast in the deep. Now, you listen to me. If you're here this morning and I'm saying, you need to listen very, very carefully to what I'm saying. They went over into this herd of pigs. It's a herd of pigs. That's some swine over there, pigs. He said, no, they're bigger pigs. They're still pigs. And they're smaller and fatter pigs. They're still pigs. They're wild boars. They're still pigs. They make any difference what they are. They're pigs. So they go over into here. Now watch this one man. Can you imagine that one man had a legion of demons in him? Listen to me very carefully. Had a legion of demons in him, and he tried to commit. They tried to drive him to commit suicide. He lived in places where dead people were buried. Uh, they tried to chain him up and, and, and tie him down. It wouldn't work. He'd break loose and go do what he wanted to do. Sounds like the streets of Columbus, doesn't it? And they, they do all these things. Now watch this. One man had all of this inside of him. When God told him to get out of him, and they begged him, please don't put us in the water. Don't do it. I don't know why. They just say that. And then he said, let us go into this herd of swine. And Jesus said, okay, I'll permit that. Now, you read the story. One man, can you imagine, they went into a herd of swine, and they ran violently off the cliff and down into the water. They killed themselves. The pigs did. They couldn't take it anymore. They were just... Barely inside this man, who knows how long he's been this way. Now, I want to talk to you about this man. So, by the way, he, he got saved. This man that was demon possessed got saved. He done went and got saved. Now, you know something? Jesus is just like that, isn't it? Jesus is awful good to us. I want to talk to you. If you're here this morning and you're lost, you need to listen. If you never listen again, now, if you're a church goer, that doesn't mean you're saved. If you carry a Bible, that doesn't mean you're saved. You got baptized, that doesn't necessarily mean you got saved. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you have not from your heart given Him your life and trusted Him to forgive your sins and become your own begotten Savior, if you have not done that, you are lost and on your way to hell. Listen, be careful, lost person. The devil is using you. You say, I'm in church. The devil is using you. I'll explain this in just a moment. This poor soul in our story is being used by the devil. It's kind of obvious, though, isn't it? It even says so. But we look at people sometimes. We don't look at other people this way. You see, hold on there. The townspeople did not see this. 
You know what they saw? They simply saw, a, they didn't see a man being used to the devil. They didn't go, there's that guy being used to the devil. That's not what they said. That's not what they thought. You know what they thought? Look, there's that mentally disturbed guy again. There's that mentally disturbed guy again. Yeah, look at it. Oh, that guy, he's just crazy. That's what he's doing. This guy's got some real mental problems. And they just thought he had a disorder, thought he was a little crazy. Just stay away from him. And a lot of people just believe that's what's going on in our world. Just people off their rocker. That's why they act that way. Now, you listen to be careful. That's what the townspeople thought. The man himself, he did not realize it. He didn't like a lot of people. Well, it's just the way it goes in my life. At least for me, it does. It's just the way it's turned out for me. Most people aren't this way, but I guess I've had some bad luck in life, and that's just the way that it is. Uh, my life has turned out that way. And, okay, it may not be that way for you, but it's that way for me. And nobody's talking about the devil. Nobody's talking about demons. Nobody's talking about real help. We're all just talking about medicines, and, and we have some problems. This man has some problems. Just to be careful. No one in this town gave this poor man any hope. Nobody, they all knew, but nobody gave this man any hope. Now they tried to, okay, he's really disturbing people, call the law, have him locked up. They tried that. They tried it. The Bible said they put him in fetters and chains, and he broke loose and headed straight back to where he used to go all the time. And where he used to go all the time happened to be where dead people hang out. And so he found himself there all the time. And the Bible said that he was there a long time. Long, what is a long time? No, no, do it. But he was there for a long time. Then the lost person, the, la- the, the lost person, if that's you this morning, you may actually think you're in control, don't you? You think you're actually making decisions and you just have some bad luck. And that's what you're thinking, right? Well, if this would have happened and that would have happened, then this would have been my outcome. But you, so you actually think you're in control. You actually think you're the one calling the shots. You think that before long, you'll catch a break and things will turn out a lot better, don't you? Do you have any idea why you were led here this morning? Do you have any idea why God gave you the ability to show up here this morning just so you could have a better mental picture of yourself, so you have a better attitude about things. You listen to me, listen to me well. You are not in control of your life. The devil is. I, whether you believe that or not, I'm telling you what the Bible has to say. This man right here, nobody in town realized what was going on. They could care. Tie that guy up. Get him out. Somebody put that man in jail. Boy, he needs to be on drugs. There's something wrong with that fellow right there. Get rid of it. Look at him running around naked, sleeping where dead people are at. All right, who does that? That guy's not right in his mind, but he's right for himself. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them. Who is the image of God should shine unto them? You know what's happening. You think you're in control, but your mind, you're blind. You don't even see. You keep defending all the things and the wrong things and the wrong thinking and the wrong behavior in your life, and the devil just keeps clapping for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, it's all about you're in charge. Yeah, you take care of yourself. This man right here did not fully understand what was going on. He's being controlled. You think you're running your life, don't you? You really think that it's up to you how this whole thing turns out. I'm going to tell you something right now. Without Jesus Christ, you're not in control of anything. You're not in control of the way you act. You think it, when you have real good days, you think, here we go. See, things are working out. You think it's going to stay that way. In this world, you actually think it's going to stay that way. In Romans chapter number 6, verse number 16, know ye not to whom you yield your members, to him you are the servants of. To whom you yield your members, to him you are the servants of. And the Bible teaches me that without Christ, without the Spirit of God, you're none of his. I talked to a lady yesterday, I'm so funny, and she said, that I was saved, but I think it was like 10 or 15 years later, I got the Spirit. He said, what did you tell her? I just said, huh, how about that? It just went on. Uh, you don't stand at the door and argue Bible with people. And so what happens here, the Bible said, his servants you are to whom you obey. The reason you do what you're doing is because you're trying to be in control, and you're not any more than this dear man is right here. Without Christ in your life, you are a vessel to be used at Satan's discretion. He may not be fully showing himself today, but this is what happens when something goes wrong, you don't like it, you blow your stack. Just, just the other day, somebody road rage. I mean, it's just crazy what people are doing anymore. Just ready to snap anytime. What do you think all that is? 
people bad at, they need to be chained up. Oh, you mean like this guy here? Oh, they got a bad attitude. You mean like this guy here? Why are people so short-tempered? I never met the person. The light's been green for four hours. Beep. And they want to give you sign language. And you think to yourself, what is your problem? Okay, then you get an attitude. Right? And we all think we're kind of in control of this. We're not. The Bible said the devil is the prince and power of the air. The whole atmosphere, the, 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 the way things are being run is because he's running things. And you think that you're going to withstand what he wants to. You're not. You're not in control of these things. The devil's success. You only tell you some success stories of the devil. You know, I'm going to tell you some success stories. I'll tell you some success stories. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick if you do that. A preacher of righteousness that does not preach the truth is the devil's success story. Watch what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. There are preachers in pulpits this morning that are nicer than I am. Probably take money, but they're nicer than I am. And they're called real nice guys, real upright kind of people. And yet, they're not preaching truth. How many people have even told me, preacher, I, you know, I know you preach the truth, but you know, the whole attitude thing, you know, they're yelling and they're screaming, and oh, I just can't take it anymore. So you'd rather go to hear somebody that's not really teaching you or preaching you the truth because he's a nice person. Watch what the Bible has to say. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 14, and no marvel, don't be surprised. For that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Do you know how he, why he can do that? That's what he used to be. He was Lucifer at one time. So it's no big deal for him to act like that again. But watch what it says. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers be transformed into ministers of evil, wicked, and no, righteousness. This, this, this is the devil's success story. Nobody's catching on to this. Nobody's. We, we judge churches by how the preacher yells and screams about sin and makes us feel comfortable. My job is not to make you feel comfortable. If you're not living right, you should be irritated. You should look at yourself and say, man, I didn't realize that. God wants me to get right. This is what Jesus did when he showed up. He didn't pat the guy on his head and say, poor fella, not his fault. I love you anyway. He looked at him and said, those things need to get out of you so you can begin the kind of life I want you to live. And that's what Jesus did. The devil's success stories are those who work miracles, but they're workers of iniquity. Those who work miracles, but are work. listen to me. I know you watch all the healing shows. Ooh, I watched it the other day. I was telling you, God. What God? Turn, if you would, please, to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter number 7. I prefer using the Bible to say, okay, that's his opinion. It's not my opinion. The Lord Jesus Christ himself, what's the wording here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23? Are you there? Matthew 7, verse 22. And many, now this is, this is the judgment day, and he says this, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Well, that's a good thing, right? What's this? In thy name. Well, that's good. In thy name have cast out devils. Well, that's good, right? See, you think I'm saying, yeah, that's right. I don't know. Watch what he says. And in thy name done many Wonderful works. Notice how they keep saying, in thy name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Right? I'm not mocking Jesus at all. And then, watch what he says. And then, next verse, and then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Hold on, we're not done. Depart from me. Did you read the rest of it? Did you see how Jesus said what their works really amounted to? Did you see that? Did you see that? Ye workers of iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. That's sin. Wait a minute. Wonderful works in your name. Demons cast out in your name. We did great things in your name. Jesus said, I don't even know who you are. We think today because somebody says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
That means they're Christians, that everything's right. Folks, God gave you a Bible so that you can pass right judgment on people. And if it's not according to God's word, it's fake as all get out. It's as queer as a $3 bill. You're not supposed to be cashing that in. It's not good for you at all. But yet we fall in because we don't know our Bible. And yet today we do not believe in demon possession. We believe everybody just having bad luck. People that have psychological problems, it, it, the devil. We don't even bring that. Bring that up to your psychologist next time. You think I'm demon possessed? He said, you need more pills, what you need. They, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to help you. This man comes running to Jesus, and he's got a boatload full of problems. And Jesus knew exactly what to do. The devil's success story. The one in the Baptist church acting like the sheep, but inwardly is a wolf, just waiting their time to destroy the flock. Paul had a great fear of this when he left. Paul was all beat up, bruised, scarred, little fella. Some people he maybe 5'2", maybe 5'3", not very big, very educated, but man, he had been through it. And when he spoke, people were afraid. Paul even said one time there was a guy by the name of Diotrephes who loved to have the preeminence in the church. I will run things here, and when Paul gets here, I'll talk with him. Paul said, look, when I get there, I'll straighten him out. So Diotrephes said, oh, we don't want you here, and we don't want anybody that likes you here. So they're running everybody out, and Paul says, I'm sorry. When I do, I'm going to straighten this guy out. You have to understand something here. Our picture of what preachers should and shouldn't be today is probably so far from Bible, it's not even funny anymore. When I first got saved, I never heard what hard preaching. What is hard? Somebody tell me, what is hard preaching? You mean preaching that you're not living to? You mean it's hard to swallow because you need to swallow it and you don't want to swallow it, and that's what makes it hard. No, preacher, you're stepping on my toes. I don't know, wear still toed shoes. I don't want to tell you. How come preaching truth in the Bible? That's the way you preach. Truth, no matter how it comes out, it's got to be truth. Okay, watch it. Uh, some people are demon possessed, and you need to get right with God. Does that help? It's the same thing I just got through saying, but I was screaming and yelling. But you know, the day I got saved, there was a guy there, man, old man. First time I've never been to Baptist church in my life. So for those of you that came from Catholic church, Mormon churches, whatever you do, uh, all that fake stuff, you come from the oh, the difference between all that. You come from all this fake stuff, and you come here, and you're thinking, what is his problem? What's he so mad about? I'm mad about sin. I'm mad about preachers that don't preach the truth. I'm mad about people saying they have a Bible. It's not a King James Bible. I am so fed up with people, Christians, saying, well, if you were nicer, I would do it. Nice has nothing to do with it necessarily. Truth, truth, truth is what makes the difference. You say, well, can't you be nice and do the truth? Some can, I can't. He said, why do you do that? I don't know. It's the way I was broke in, I guess. See, there's a little country church out on the Hayden Run Road. Now it's in the city, but it used to be in the country. I was there on a Thursday night. And a brand new Christian, he said, well, see, he didn't know what he was doing. No, they all preached like it. Man, brother, I'll, I'll tell you right now. What God wants you to do is trust in the Lord. And if you got sin in your life, are you trying to get right with God? Can I have an amen? And I thought, oh, I never heard preaching in my life. Never. We didn't go to church. And this young man got up. He was probably in his late 20s, early 30s. And he's yelling and screaming about everything. He's making up some stuff. And I thought, man, he knows everything I've been doing. Jesus knew everything he'd been doing. Jesus knows everything you've been doing. That's not bad. Quit trying to hide it. He knows everything you've been doing. He wants you to know there's no sense hiding it. You understand? So I'm sitting there that night, and I keep thinking to myself, who let this guy loose? Who, who, what's he yelling and screaming about? Well, can I ask you, thank you very much, can I ask you something? If your family was in a fire in a house, would you say something like this, honey, the house is on fire? You know, the children really should exit. I'm not trying to upset anybody. That's not what you do. Get out! Honey, wake up! Get out of the house, please! And she's going to go like, yes, you got a bad attitude. Then why do you act that way during preaching? You should be amen. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you're waiting for what? The crowd to agree with me? It really doesn't matter whether the crowd agrees or not. And that's the problem with our religious churches today. We're waiting to say, 
Okay, is everybody in agreement? Is the wind blowing just right? Okay, I'm for it too. And if it's not, we just cross our arms and stare at the preacher, look at our watch like, when's it going to be done? I'll tell you when I'll be done, just as soon as I'm done. That's deep, in it? And then you grit your teeth like, oh, here he goes again. I feel so bad for this man. But you see, there are a lot of the devil's successes out there. The ones who fit in and looks and acts like others. But they never bear any fruit. The Bible said the enemy did that. The tares among the wheat. They went back, the laborers that belonged to, to, the, to Jesus, and said, who did this? Did, did we have bad seed? No, God seeds, good seed, good seed, good seed. Look at me, good seed. This does not produce bad stuff. But the enemy does. And he said, an enemy came in at night, so tares among the wheat. Now, it's an amazing thing about tares and wheat. And I'm not a farmer, so don't hold this against me. They, they don't grow much wheat in the city. So, what? No, seriously, they don't. I don't know if you knew that either. I understand that tares and wheat look almost identical when they're starting to grow. Do you know when you can tell the difference? Wheat bears fruit, seed of itself. Tares don't, so wheat, it doesn't bear anything. You say, well, why, why would they sow that? We didn't. There are plants in every church that's preaching the Bible. They're being used of the devil, and what will happen is when they're finally pointed out by the word of God, by the word of God, they get real irritable. They grit their teeth and they stare and they'll look around them. They get real antsy about truth. Let me get it straight. You, you, you're upset because of truth? Yeah, you hear people cuss on the job. Did you stand up and tell them stop? No, you didn't do that. Somebody, you went to a church and they're all speaking in fake tongues and fake healing. And you didn't say anything about that. You just walk in the right hand side. But now you're in a church that's actually showing you the Bible and telling you the way things really are. And you're trying to pass judgment. And you'll tell people you shouldn't judge. You're judging me right now. Yes, you are. And some of you are members of our church. So you after some? Yep. See, the devil's success is that nice family in a nice neighborhood who works good jobs, loves their children, Attends church, but tells other people, you need to live right to go to heaven. You tell everybody you have a King James Bible, but other than that, you use something else. Most people think the devil's success stories are those out in society, the outcasts, those steeped in filth and sin. No, those are failures. They don't deceive anybody. The guy under the, the people on the corner that make themselves up to look like bums, maybe some of them are, most of them just act that way because free tax, free money. All you got to do is stare at a woman for a while. Put up a sign, nobody can read it anyway. You're taking pencil or writing on cardboard. It doesn't show up. The devil's success stories or his failures is the violent gang member is the devil's failure. You say, I'm not faking anybody out. You say, I don't care. That's my point. You're not deceiving anybody. Just other people like you. You're not helping anybody. It's the, the, the devil's uh, 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 failures is the drug addict. It's the person, I don't care if it's pharmaceuticals, I don't care if it's illegal drugs. You think because it's legal makes it all right. You say, I can't sleep at night. Try praying. Try get right with God. Read the book of Chronicles. Put the king to sleep, put you to sleep. The Bible said one night the king couldn't sleep. He said, bring me the book of the Chronicles. Read them to me. He's just starting to doze off and he heard something that wasn't right. Woke him back up again. You see, the devil has failures, and the, and the, the failure is the whoremonger is the devil's failure. As are men that run around just sleeping and doing whatever they want to with whoever you want to. There's nothing to brag about there, buddy. There's hell waiting for you. It's just waiting to burn you good. Are you 
listen to me carefully. That's not what I want. That's not what God wants. Are you ready? I told you, put on your seatbelt this old-fashioned preaching. Homosexualities, lesbians, sodomites, queers, call them whatever you want to. It's against the Bible. I don't care how you feel in your heart. I don't care what your mama said to you. There's a man and a woman, and everything after its own time is what God said. You're not mixed up in your head. You're going to the wrong school, and they're telling you things that are not Bible, and that's your problem. Don't look at me like I said something wrong. You've been taught something that's wrong. That's the problem. A homosexual is an abomination. By the way, the word homosexual is not even in the Bible. Sodomite is. Sodomite's in the Bible. I said sodomite's in the Bible. It's still in the Bible. I don't care what book you get. If it doesn't say it's an abomination, you got a bad Bible. The drunkard does not have a problem. He's sinful. My dad did not have a disease. He did not have a mental what he did. He's a drunkard. He says, oh, Lord, that's what the Bible, the God himself used that word, drunkard. You know why? Look at me. Look at me. Hey, look at me. Pay attention. Look at me. God wants sin to look so bad. The Bible says exceeding sinful. Exceeding sin. Ugh. It's exceeding sin. I'm like, well, you know, they have problems. They have problems. They have sin in their life. They're not drinking a little bit and have a, have a social disease. They're drunkards. And the sooner we start, okay. I'm going to go build your church now. The rebellious, out of control, don't care. You're being used. You're being used. You don't even realize it. Townspeople don't realize it. Most preachers don't. Well, son, you just keep doing right. God will help you eventually. God bless you. Don't think. The only thing he's worried about is his reputation. Well, I am too. But I'm more concerned about you getting right with God and God blessing your life. Just like this right here. The whole townspeople said, what What did he do? He ruined our business. It would be good if preachers again would ruin the bar business and ruin the drug business and ruin the whore business and ruin the drug trade. It would be really good if preachers started preaching from the pulpits again what is really sin and quit just trying to get along with everybody. We want to be liked so much we're not preaching the Bible anymore. Well, you know, we need more people. We need people that want to love on God. And you're not going to do that till you get saved. You see, these people, they're being pushed and ruined by the devil. It's like this fellow right here. I feel bad for this guy. I really do. I mean, you stop thinking about it. The more you read about it, it sounds like the devil was using him, and God was the one that's mistreating him, and, and he, he's just misunderstood, and the townspeople didn't understand, and he didn't understand. It seems to me like the only person who understood was God. God no more got there, so I know what's going on here. Demon possession. You don't think a demon can be found in church? Are you crazy? You see, what happens is the devil is driving people to insanity, to commit suicide. That's what happens to them. Read the story. I'm not making this up. Getting to the point of there's no sense trying, I can't go on, I don't understand. So you go to the professionals, right? You all listen to the preacher, you don't even come and answer. You go to the professionals who got all their education from the ungodly world. And you say, well, they got all these degrees. What's that matter? Well, he's bound to know what he's doing. He went to college. Everybody should have fell out on the aisle laughing at that point. What am I saying? Unsaved, you, whether you're a success story, unsaved, if you consider yourself to be a success story, or number two, a story of open failure. Pick one out. Unsaved. Unsaved. You're being used. You're being used of the devil. You're not in control of yourself. You're just acting and reacting to whatever happens at the time. I'm trying to take this away from you to let you know because we're so, well, I went to college and I run a business and I, I can do this and I have this much money in the bank. Look, I, I appreciate all that. You ought to be tithing, by the way. And all I'm simply saying is that doesn't make you any money. 
Go to Luke chapter number 8 once again, please. You got to hurry. You guys are going to slow me down. Luke chapter number 8. Look at verse number 27. The, the devil, these demons are in this and driving him to suicide, to kill himself. Have you noticed how many suicides are up in our nation now? A nation where if you work hard, you can have almost anything you wanted. Why are people so depressed? Yeah, preacher, why is that? They won't listen to truth. They're buying into every lie and misguiding thing they possibly can, and they can't figure out why it's not working. And they won't go to church, not a, not a decent church. They want to go so much a week. A week and rip on me. God, I felt God in that place. Yeah, I felt God in that place. No, you didn't feel God in that place. You felt yourself in that place, and it reminded you of your old days, and that's what you liked about it. Church is for preaching and teaching and helping God's people learn about God so we can live for God, so we can witness for God, so we can influence people for God. It's not so you come and feel real good about yourself. But I feel real good about myself. Chapter number eight, verse twenty-seven. <laughs> and when he went forth to the land, this is Jesus. There met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried and fell, and uh, cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, "What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God?" He knew exactly who he was. Knew exactly who he was. I beseech thee, torment me not. So, unsaved person, you think you, well, let's see, I'll examine it and I'll make up my mind. You're being used. You're being used. Now, I hate to, to downplay your education, but education doesn't make you anybody. Education is simply a tool for you to use for other people in the cause of Christ. It's not the Lord you know how many degrees I got. Uh, no, but you can't really tell me. Go ahead. If it's not truth, it doesn't mean anything. Number two, look at verse number 32. Are you there? Look at verse 32. And there was a great herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Lost person, you really believe that you're in control. You do. That's why you keep trying to handle it. You think you are making decisions to get pukey drunk, get strung out on pills, pharmaceuticals, illegal drugs. You think you're making decisions to pierce your body, to run around half naked all the time. By the way, when you mow your grass, how come you got to wear a short shorts on? Something looks like paranoia. And you guys are playing basketball with short shorts on. You actually think that helps you to sky way up there? You got a half inch vertical, that's all you got. And shorts aren't helping you a bit. Strung out on drugs, piercing your body, half naked, rebelling against truth. You're violent. You think that's you doing all of this? You really believe you are somebody special, don't you? I'm talking to, if you're in there this morning at all, you really think you're actually trying to match which with me this morning. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because that's what lost people do. If I'm not going to do truth, I've got to argue in my mind, your truth versus what I think is true. You think you're somebody special. You really believe you are somebody special, don't you? You think you've got it all together, running around with hardly any clothes on, running around the dens and caves of the earth where dead people are. Those are bars and gambling joints. That's where dead people go. No Christian should be in a place like that. Using money, relative re- relationship with your wife and kids are all up in the air. You snarl and tear at people when they try to help you. Some people have tried to help you, but you run them off. I just don't understand. I know what I'm doing. It yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like you really know you got all under control. Some have tried to force you to behave, but you just broke free. 
you know what they're doing? They're trying to chain you down. They're trying to make you do something you really don't want to do. You really think you're somebody special. The sad part about all of this, you really believe all of this is your choosing. The fact is, you're simply being used and kept from the truth by the devil. And he is driving you to hell as fast as he can. Perhaps you've, you're one of those people who think thinking certain ways just really makes you special. I don't think. No, you're special. I'll party in hell when I die. You think you're somebody special. By the way, even the devil won't be there to party with you. I'm a devil. Somebody special. I'm an atheist. Do you know when I was in Vietnam, there were some things there. One of the more scarier things that you'll probably ever run into is in the jungle, a night firefight would scare the spirit. It's amazing how many grown men you can get in a small hole. You can get three or four in a hole that big, that deep, crying out to God to knock them down. But not us. See, we're in America. We have a right to yell and scream and hate and do what we want. You think you're in control? You're not in control. Not at all. Before you start thinking you're somebody really special, a special vessel, a chosen, I'm a leader of men. By the way, do you know, do you know what happened to these demons? Do you know what their second choice was? Anybody remember? Do you know what their second choice was? When they said, okay, we can't go to him. Can we go to this crowd? They didn't say that. Or can we, can we go to that person? They didn't say that. Do you know what their second choice was? You ready? Those of you who really think you're something, those of you who think you're running your life, those of you who think you're better than everybody else because you're an independent thinker, their second choice, demons, second choice that was in this human being was a pig. Their second choice was a pig. A fat, sloppy, slop-eating, stinky pig. We think we're something. We think we're something because, look, folks, you take a pig and bring him to church. You know something? We got a nice pig out back. I know. Let's take him to church with us. Yeah, we'll make him a Christian. Well, yeah, yeah, all you gotta do is put a suit and tie on. That makes you a Christian. So, you say, preacher, you can bring my pig. That's right. You bring my pig. You put a tie on it, a nice suit, and you go. I didn't call you a pig. I said, you got a nice, I said, like you, you got, come on. Your wife, she, she thought it was funny. Um, and so you bring him to church, and he's, he's shaking paws with everybody, you know, and squealing around and having a good time. You know what's going to happen when you take him back home? He's going to do what his real nature is. You put him down, suit on or not, he's running right back to the slot. Because that's his nature. You know, Bruce, that didn't work very well. I got him. He needs to get back to this. That'll change him. I said, okay, if you think that'll work, we're fine. Preach so you let me bring So you put his suit back on, clean him all up, put some smelling sauce on him. Boy, he smells nice, that is. Mm, <laughs> you get him back here. Brother Pledger's in there with waders on. He grabs that pig. He grabs the pig. He tries to dunk him under. Bring him back. And everyone, hey, hallelujah, another baptism. Woo! Yeah! You take him back home. You're so happy. You're so pleased. He got baptized. Put him down. Guess where he's going? Right to the spot. You know why? That's his nature. Do you know it would take a miracle to stop a pig from doing that? You ever wonder maybe why you keep doing, even though you say you got baptized, you went to the altar for prayer, you got baptized, and the first chance you got on the same night you said you got saved, you went to the bar? You were watching what? You're arguing that's true or that's not? You're still doing that? Can I ask you something? Uh, sorry, can I ask you something? Are you 
you're just going back to what's naturally you, and you think you're in charge, you're not. It's a shame that these kinds of things happen to so many people. That's the second devil, second child. Look at verse number 32. See what he said right there? Verse number 32, and he besought them, and they besought him that he would come not not command them to go out into the deep. Verse 32, and there was a herd, a whole herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer, that he would allow them. Please allow us to go over there. They were, uh, they were begging, please, Jesus, don't, don't cast us into the deep. Again, I'm not sure why. But he said, let us go into this herd of swine. He said, okay, I'll allow it. I think they thought they found the way to get away. Like you do. You keep making excuses. Well, that might apply to him or her, but that didn't apply to me. You still play that game, aren't you? Well, what's wrong with a little social little trick? I don't know. Tell my dad that. Tell the guy under the viaduct that. What's wrong with having a little recreation on the weekend? Is that what we call it now? Smoking dope is recreation? Is that, is that what we call it? Getting high on pharmaceutical, is that what we call it? Recreation, taking the edge, is that what we call sin now? Taking the edge off? And you think you're in control. Number three. All the way to the second, devil second choice. You see, preacher, you're for me. Mud, sloppy, slop eating, stinky, fat pig. Next to you, that's where he wants to be. Can't have a human, I'll take that. You see, preacher, you're not making me feel good. That's my point. That's what I'm trying to do. Number three. Look at verse number 29. There's a greater than the devil, though. Praise the Lord, amen. There is a greater than the devil. I, I yell about Jesus, you get scared. Who? Who? What's he yelling at? Jesus. I don't mean to bore you. Savior. God incarnate. God on this earth. God come to save man. Don't amen. Just sit there and stare. Your Savior, the one who died for you, whether you're saved or not, he died for you. That's the one I'm talking. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If he's not in you, you have no power against the devil. None whatsoever. You think you're resisting. You're only doing what he's guided you to do. Thank God, the one using you and driving you and abusing you and destroying your life, the one who wants you to stay deceived until the day you die and go to hell, is no match for our Savior. No match for our Savior. Many years this guy was like that, Jesus showed up, and that's in that story. You don't have to come to church for a year and a half to finally figure that one out. You are no match for this world. You're flesh of the devil. No match at all. You're coming face to face with the truth. I'm not asking you to bow before me. I'm not asking you to ask me forgiveness. Jesus is the one died for you, not Pastor Bell. You need to go to him and realize you're not in charge of that. The devil's second choice to you is a pig. I don't feel very praised this morning. I'm trying to make you feel praised. It's not praise or worship, it's praise and service. Pastor, I don't know. You don't know my problem. You don't know my sin. I've been drunkard. Right? A long time. You've been demon possessed a long time. You get it? You follow me? I've been a lesbian, sodomite, transvestite, weirdo. Long time. This man was demon possessed for a long time. Now, everybody in here has a lesbian friend or a homosexual friend, and they're real nice people. Folks, that has got a thing to do with it. It has to do with truth. God says abomination in the sight of God. I don't care if it's your uncle. I don't care if it's your husband or wife. God says abomination in the sight of God. I don't care what our society likes or does not like. God, God said, God, God, are you listening to me? God said homosexuality, lesbianism, sodomite is an abomination in the sight of God. I'll wait to get to the You need to quit shouting because I can't hear myself. I'll wait for you to quit saying amen. You amen to the truth. I've let men have their way with me most of my life, preacher. I have a Savior who's a man. He'll love you right. He'll love you right. I've hurt and abused people severely, preacher. Oh, what a 
you're waiting for Jesus to grab you by the neck and then to force you to get saved, you will not go to heaven. You have a will. God gave it to you. It's called a brain. Now, the Bible also teaches in, in Romans, I think it's Romans, yeah, Romans chapter 7, I think it is. It talks about how the flesh, there's a law of the flesh and it's sin. And that law of the flesh tries to capture your mind, your will, and bring it into subjection of your sinful flesh. Well, I know what I'm doing. I have a right to do this. That's your flesh trying to lead and guide you. And God said, no, no, I made a law. You have a will. You have a will. Stop it now. You have a will. I can't. Not true. You have a will. Anything God wants you to do that's right, you can do that because God gave you a will. And if you're saying you have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, you have the power even to shut in your mouth. I just think I tell people what I believe. No, ma'am. Don't say that. Do you want to continue to run in the dens of Cain? Then go ahead. Go ahead. You preach I'm in a gang. It's not that easy to get out. You're lying to yourself. All they have to know is, this guy's really serious. You know why? Because light and darkness cannot belong together. Every time they come around, instead of you trying to make excuses and logic, just talk to them about Jesus. They'll be See, you're not going about it right. I was one. I dealt drugs down when I was a kid. And everybody told me, Bill, you're going to get yourself in big trouble. Every time they saw me, it was like this. Are you still me going to church? Uh, I'm real happy for you. <laughs> they weren't happy for me. And then they'd leave. Nobody hung around. I owed a lot of money to a lot of people. They didn't have anything to do with me. You keep trying to run around with them and make them your friends. That, that guy, that, that guy or that girl that keeps saying, hey, you want to go out tonight? You want to go out party a little bit? You want to go down to the bar? That's your friend. That's like somebody offered a cigarette. Here, you want some cake, sir? Here, take one. He's trying to be neighborly. Why is it neighbors go like this? Hey, you want a beer? How come Christians go, you want Jesus? You want a little Jesus? You want a beer? Hey, you want a cigarette? You want to see you? I know, I know. Please, can you see him down? You ever think about a woman kissing a guy that loves him? They take this to school, right? You can always tell because they get a big round thing on the back of their jeans, right? And they go like this. That's his choice. Really? That's okay with you. But you come to church and hear somebody like me go, I don't want to go back there anymore. That guy really upsets me. Why do I upset you? You tell me anything I'm saying is not the truth. So truth upsets you. That's weird. So, you say, I want to stop preaching. I wish I could stop preaching. I wish I was not this way. I just can't break free. That is not true. This is where my testimony shines through and says, yes, you can. I'll just wait for all you sinners that are saved to say amen. I know you aren't that bad. I got up here. You're a nice person. I wasn't. And I make no shit. I'm not bragging. God's grace. This fella here. Come here. This is the way God intended for people, not this ugly, but God intended people to grow up. Good mom, good dad, raised in church, a Baptist church, learned what's true, met a good girl over here, got married, served the Lord. This is God's intention. This is what God designed. Most of us are not that. Most of us are like us. Okay, me. And no Christian background. Up in the street. I don't care if you like me or not. I just knock your stinking head off. That's all. Drugs, gambling, drinking, fighting, prison, almost two times. I mean, close to. And then that kind of volunteer that was not until he got out. When God saved me, it shows me the extent of God's grace. This is the God's design. Good mom, good dad, 
Christians, Christians serving the Lord, raised kids, they're serving the Lord, his brother's serving the Lord at the first Baptist church. This is this was God's design. I'm not God's design. However, did you think there's no hope for me? The grace of God, when he reached down his hand for me, he had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without Christ, God or his son. When he reached, he didn't reach the gutter. He reached way below the gutter and said, George Bell, I can save you. And even that very night, arguments started. Yell but this and yell but that. And what about this? And I can't that. You can't. But your Savior can. This man was demon possessed for a long, long time. Jesus shows up and says, Get out of him. I'm going to show you something real amazing here. Just a second. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't lie to yourself. You come to Jesus Christ, you can stop and set aside anything that God wants you to. And you can start, I don't have any friends in church. Make some friends in church. What do you want us to do? Buy your house? We do that. We, we feed you. We, we invite you to our place. We, we have fellowships here. We, we want you to be around us all. What do you want? All it takes is a neighbor going, hey, you want a drink? Yeah, oh, man, let's go. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. Whosoever thirsts, let him come and take the water of life freely. Come on, it's free. It's open to everybody. Come on, come on. Now, it's, he didn't say the church is free. He didn't say being good. He didn't say turning over a new leaf. That leaf is dead on one side of the other. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to stand drunk. Free. You want to be free? God make you free. You don't have to work in that strip joint. I used to have two women that came here, a one to Christ, and uh, they actually were dancers in churches. Now, our people didn't know that. They knew women could go in this way. It's like, okay, only certain people could go in this church. You mean sinners like us? And they went back to it. Why? They were single. When did sin and going against God make it right because of good money? You skip church for money. You stay away from home for money. You say, I'm too busy to read because I'm making money. My family's going to hell and my kids are going stupid because of money. I don't have time to do what God said I should do. You're too busy. You're busier than God ever intended. And the devil's just taking you straight on into hell. And you're lying and thinking these are all your decisions, and they're not. You really can leave that gang if you want to. Look at me, young lady. You could drop that boy in the middle. If they got you thinking. can change that ungodly lust of homosexuality you love Christ. You cannot maintain and stay in that kind of lifestyle and be saved at the same time. It's impossible. It's impossible. But Jesus loves me and I'm homosexual. Jesus does love you and you're homosexual. You say, so, well, I know somebody. No, you don't. You're just hearing what they have to say. You cannot do something abominable and be right with God at the same time. Some of you are getting lazy now, aren't you? You're squirming, looking for songs. I think my, oh, wish my baby was here so start crying. You can change that ungodliness. You can rid yourself of the devil worship by the help of Christ. You can be free from depression and suicidal tendencies. Do you truly want, the, the question would be this, do you truly want to be set free? You don't, you just don't want the problem. You don't want to be set free to serve God. You just don't want those problems in your life. Having less problems does not mean you're saved. Finally, something going your way out in the world doesn't mean you're saved. Saved means saved. 
I know that's deep, but that's what I mean. Say you can stand up. Finally, let me close with this one. Go to Luke chapter 8, verse number 45. What can you look forward to? You say, that's a good question, preacher. If I get saved, preacher, what can I look forward to? Luke 8, 35. Look at 35. And when they went out to see what had been done, these all the village people, not the village people, sorry, mind you, some people used to worship. They came to Jesus and found a man out of whom the devils were departed. Now watch this, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. Well, basically he's the same, he's just, he's just no more devils. Oh really, so you think that's the way it works? I got saved and basically my life's the same, I'm just saying. Is that what you think happens? Watch what it says here. Found the man out of whom Jesus, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. I guess that'd be like church. How come you skip church every Sunday? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You need to make money on Monday. That's what I forgot. I forgot. And in his right mind, huh, he starts thinking like, look at there. You know what screwed you up in your head? Everything out there. This is what clears it all up. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus and in church. Jesus said, no, upon this earth, no. Some of you act shocked like, yes, he is. No, he's not. No, he's not. You're making stuff up. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. So the Father and Jesus are in heaven. The Holy Ghost of God's in your heart if you're saved. If you're not, he's not there. Whether you think you're speaking in tongues or healing or not, if he's not there, you're not saved. Without the Spirit, you're not a fan. I hate to quit quoting Bible, but it's the truth. You'll be found where Jesus is found. My brother, when he won me to Christ, folks, you have to understand how ignorant and stupid I was about spiritual things. I didn't know even I didn't even know how to pray. You can't get saved unless you go to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. I never heard that before. What are you talking about? You mean I have to quote something like Calvin? Now I'll lay me down to sleep. Head hurts, stomach hurts, get folks fresh. What are you talking about? I didn't know what an altar was. He just stood up for me. He never said a word. No explanation, no nothing. It's called conviction. I really didn't like what I was becoming. I didn't like treating people the way I did. I didn't like hurting people the way I did. I didn't like taking the things. I really didn't. I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't change my. I was what I was, and so are you. You say, what about Mother Mary and what about, Mother Mary got a thing to herself. I didn't know to come in the name of the Father and Jesus. I didn't know anything. That's why the Bible says in Romans, that the heart man believes in Christ. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You don't need some ritual. You don't need to memorize a bunch of scripture. God made it so simple. A child can be saved. Come on, adults. You can be saved. Use the will of God he gave you. Apply the truth and say, if God's lying, nobody stands a chance anyway. You might as well come to Christ. What do you got to lose? Sin, self, world. Guess what you got to gain? Everything. Everything. Look at me. A drug addict preaching the Bible. You didn't know that, did you? Preaching the Bible. Who would have ever thunk it? Me. Look at what I'm doing. Look what God has allowed me to do. A guy like me. Seriously? This guy, demon possessed, sometime right after that, Jesus, I'm going to go with you. If you, you travel and preach, can I go with you? Read the story. Jesus said, no. He wouldn't be mean. You know what he said? This part baffles me too. He says, go back to your town and witness to your friends. This guy had friends. I guess. Or that people around him need to know Jesus. You get saved. How come you're not talking to anybody on your job? How come you're not talking to you, your family members, and you're not changing? Spot you think 
would be able to identify the Lord. And you knew that. What do you think is going to happen then? You have to understand something here. You'll have the power of the understanding. Ready? To learn how to dress properly. To dress yourself and how to dress your wife. You'll learn that. Every every word that came out of my mouth when I first got saved was cussing. That's all it was. I was talking to Giovanni the other day. I'm cussing the other day. All the time. And I told him, I said, you know, when I first got saved, or before I got saved, I didn't realize it. I'd be in a Burger King or whatever, and there I am with my shorts and sandals on, blowing smoke over everybody, cussing out loud, saying what I want to say, fighting away time I wanted to. I never even thought about those kids. Never thought about that long way. Now, here's what you're saying. I'm not that way. You're a sinner. You're as bad off. You were as bad as I was, but you're as bad off. You still die and go to hell. You can't, you can't get any more bad off than that. I didn't really have to think about that now. And, and it just riles me when I hear people say stuff like that around our people. And I go, that's boy, you are just so ugly. That was me. God changed me. Oh, you got saved, but you basically the same. You don't believe God has any more power than to save you. Basically, you're the same. You went from being a child of the devil to a child of God. Basically, there's no difference. Seriously, is that what you believe? You see, what will happen is joy will replace your sadness. Hope will replace your depression. Laughter and right words will replace your cussing and your vulgar speech. Peace will replace anxiety. Obedience with willingness will replace rebellion. Gentleness will replace violence. Heaven will replace hell. Eternal life will replace eternal damnation. And you can just keep the noise down. I can't hear myself shout. I can't believe how God's people no longer, amen, we don't get excited about anything. Oh, um, yeah, I guess that's the truth. Brother, I don't want to get over it. I want to get over it. Why do I want to get over it? All of this and much more. How could you not want this? Because you still That's the fight that's going on in your mind and heart right now. The night I got saved, I lost everything. I mean, I could go into detail and everything. I lost, I had no friends. Living with my mom, eating mom and cigarettes off of her, no car, no job, no girlfriend, no nothing. And when my brother asked me, he said, why don't you go to church with me? Same argument. You hold up the same argument. I said, Bill, leave me alone. I got things going on. What kind of a lie is that? Your empty life when somebody has gone, right? Why do you keep lying? It's getting worse all the time. And after you hear this, it's going to get worse if you don't get better. It will. I'm just telling you. Mark it down. Definite change. I, uh, I, I don't say this to embarrass anybody, especially this girl. I have no idea what she's ever doing. Social media with any of friends. I might lose a friend. Now, anyway. <laughs> the night I got saved, I, I mean, I was, it was, I, I couldn't fit in. I was changing so fast, I couldn't believe it. When you go from an absolutely, absolutely, absolutely no light, dark room, and someone turns on a floodlight, you going to tell me nothing really happened? I started to walk out of church. I just cut for here. Saturday night, devil's night. That's what they used to call it, devil's night, you know. And I walked out. And I just, my face all swollen. I'd be had to get all blotchy. It wouldn't be called Baptist crying, right? And had some all around down there. I'm walking out like that. And I felt terrible. I didn't know what to do. Big old fatty evangelist. He just was. He's a big fat boy. His name was Bruce Daniels. I wasn't afraid of hell. To me, hell was a cuss word. I should have been terrified, but I wasn't. That's what the world does to you. I didn't have anybody in heaven. I didn't know anybody there. People I ran with, they don't go there. But what he said, God knows everything you will do. And he loves you. I know what that was. How's that possible? There are people don't know. How could he love me and know everything I've done? We were going home that night. Bruce Daniels said, Avenue boy. Well, first of all, people didn't call me that. 
said, did you get redeemed? I had never heard that word before. I, I, did, you, did you ask Jesus? And I, I, what are you talking about? Until he finally said this. Did you ask Jesus to forgive you? That I know I did. You don't need to know a lot of Bible to get right with God. He stuck out his hands. Come here. Draw me over to him. Actually, bump me off his belly. And he said, now, what's your name? I told him. He said, I'll write to you. And he wrote me a letter. Glad you got the same spirit when you're not preaching. Glad you got that. I'm assuming it's from Bruce Daniels, but whatever. My brother went that night. My brother took pictures. He wrote me a letter. And he said, uh, Bruce, I'm ice cream. He was buying, so I said, yeah. That's all it's good for, right? So we stand at the Dairy Queen there in Hillier, and I'm standing beside my brother. I, I don't stand this way. I always stand this way. Got me in a lot of fights. So I'm standing here this way because I'm just crushed. This new life is starting up. It's, I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't figure it out. My eyes are all blotchy and I've got some dried snot running down my face. I'm about all leaned over like this. And, and I'm standing, my brother's standing here, and there's somebody in front of him. And I'm standing there, and I see it's a woman, and I see her turn her feet. And oh, excuse me, and I looked up. Are you listen to me, Christian? Are you listen to me today? It was a girl that I had met. I should not date. She went to First Baptist Church. She was 13. She followed me. What are you supposed to do? But anyway. Maybe something. And she looked at me and she said, something happened to you. I didn't know what to tell her. I just looked at her. She said, I'm here with my fiance. I called her my dad. Now, what kind of relationship is that? So I said, okay. I just happened to remember her number still. From the time that we no longer were hanging around was high school. At that time, I almost was in two really bad automobile accidents. I was in Vietnam. I was in demolitions. I was in a lot of bad areas. And then I finally came back, almost went to prison, and then I got saved. I called her on the phone. Now, you listen to me, you that will not talk to anybody about Jesus Christ. Right out of the world, didn't know anything about the Bible, knew nothing about Christianity, knew nothing about church. I called her on the phone. She said, something happened to you. I said, well, yeah, they, they gave us the invitation. I went to this thing up front and asked Jesus to, oh, 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 I'm so happy for you. Oh, I knew something happened. While she's carrying on, this cross, this mind, this thought crossed my mind. You know what it was? I said, can I ask you a question? Anything. Hey, I'm so happy. Why didn't you ever tell me? You love your husband too much to talk to him about Jesus, do you? Oh, you love that friend of yours too much to tell him you got saved. Oh, really? Do you know I could have died and went to hell because she cared too much to talk to me? What kind of Christianity you got? And listen to me. Trying to reason with you. Understand. You call that your friend. You say you love that person and you don't tell him about Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? She got real quiet. She didn't know what to say. She never said anything. To this day, I don't think she said anything. Man, I'm glad you're saved. That's dancing in your spirit for those of you that are charismatic people. That's why I sing. I sing because there is an empty grave. I sing because there is a power to save. I sing. Because His grace is real to me. Take it, Mary. You can sing it. Our quartet sang that song. That's a good song right there. Can I sing? Why do you still sing what you used to sing? Why do you still go where you used to go? Why do you still talk the way you used to talk? Why do you still dress the way you used to dress? And then you're telling people you got saved and Jesus makes a difference. Seriously? I tell you what makes a difference. This man's life. Did you see that? Did you read that story? This guy got saved and said, you know, Jesus, I'm going to sit at your feet. I'm going to learn from you. Can I go with you? Jesus said, no, you stay here and witness to your friends. They need you, and I'm leaving. When Jesus went away, he said, you go into all the world and preach the gospel. You need to do that. That's your job. You need to tell people about Jesus Christ. That's all you need to do. Go home. That's what I do. And that's what I've been trying to do for all these 50 some years. By the way, yesterday was my anniversary. 50, 50, 50, how many years? 51? Why? Longer than I thought. No wonder I'm worn out. 
51 years. I got saved when I was uh, just barely into 20. My birthday is March the 2nd. Should have wrote that down. It's very important. I got saved in April, March 8th, the 15th, on Saturday night. I was barely 20 years old when I got saved. Can you all believe this? I was in more sin and destruction than most men do in a lifetime. And look at me now. Hey, look at me now. Okay, you stay seated. Don't get shot. Nothing really happened to you. Well, something happened to me. Something happened to me. Something I keep trying to tell people about all of my life, I still can't figure it out. Why God would even pay attention to somebody like me. You keep thinking God should have chosen you. No, he didn't. He chose you because you could not help yourself, and it was his love that came after you, and not you that went after him. Oh, what a Savior. Are you saved? If it really depended upon truth, I said, not, I didn't ask what you said. Proof. Why would anybody believe they're going to save? I'm a good person. I can take this cup down. I'll tell that on the way. I wasn't. You are. You're okay. The devil seconds Christ. <laughs> Call you, you go to his next choice. He told me unnecessary. You got a savior who gave his life for you, and he can change that fastest prayer. Father, thank you. 